We're working on part 8 of problem 5. If you're wondering where part 7 went, uh, we already solved it, so watch the video for 5.5. A friend proposes a reduction from SQ to Hampath that includes this step. For a vertex V in SQ labeled with quest value Q, generate Q vertices V1, V2, V3, da 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 da, up to VQ in Hampath, and so on and so forth. Um, so first of all, you might be going like, aha, they're reducing from SQ to Hampath, that's wrong, they should be reducing from Hampath to SQ, and that's what's wrong with this reduction. No, I mean, it's still a reduction, right? That, that doesn't make it not a reduction. Um, so what is this question really asking about? Explain why such a reduction does not qualify as the kind of polynomial time reduction we've been using in our NP completeness proofs. So it's not that the reduction is the wrong direction. Maybe you proved SQ poly uh, NP complete before you ever learned about Hampath. In that case, you could reduce from SQ to Hampath to prove Hampath is NP complete. Well, NP hard. So why isn't this polynomial time reduction? Is this polynomial time? Well, I mean, right now, just from what we can see so far, it depends on the rest of the reduction, and it depends on the graph representation. You do not, depending on your graph representation, you do not necessarily have to list out all the vertices in a graph. If you just list out all the edges in a graph, and you just tell me how many vertices there are, and I assume that the vertices are, uh, if, if you give me seven, I assume the vertices are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Then you don't actually have to list out all the vertices. You, you do have to be able to represent sufficiently large numbers, uh, but it only takes log of n bits to represent a number n. So that, that might not be a problem. Um, however, if this actually requires, you know, having edges between these vertices or doing anything with these vertices, you are generating, so creates number of vertices proportional to Q. Uh, say each vertex is involved in something like an edge. Okay? Um, I, you know what? It's a hand path. I, I was trying to be nice in general, but l let's be specific. Say each vertex is involved in an edge. Uh, so that you need at least one bit per edge. That is really easy to imagine. In most cases, you do need at least one bit per edge. Uh, you can argue with me on the other end. If you're, if you're really deep into theory and you're really nitpicky, argue with me and think, oh, well, I could have a, a, a bit right at the start that says whether this is a complete graph. Okay, and if it's a complete graph, my representation stops there. I, I say the number of vertices, and then I say it's complete. And I only list out the edges if it's incomplete. So yes, there exist representations where I don't need to use any bits for many, many edges. But in general, I'm going to have to use at least one bit per edge, and it's easy to set this up so that I'm forced to use at least one bit per edge because there's enough flexibility in the problem. Uh, so that, that I can force anyone to use at least one bit per edge, in the worst case, uh, for this representation. Okay, so how many bits have I just spent? Okay, how many bits, what is, what is the size of Q? How many bits does it take to represent Q? Well, in general, it takes uh, O of log Q bits, right? To represent 100, we don't need 100 bits. We only need, what, around uh, 7 bits or something like that? So in general, to represent a natural number Q, we don't need Q bits. We need log Q bits. 
So that means we are taking up q bits, and the input only had log q bits. We are creating an exponential number of bits. So uh, underlying instance. The underlying instance is length. Might be more than polynomial. For example, exponential. And if it's more than polynomial, then it takes more than polynomial time to produce it. So then this is not a polynomial time reduction.